Hello Flostube, my name is Tamara and in today's video we are going to speak about uh, William uh, Morris. Yes, and um, the connection or his um, uh, influence uh, into uh, stitching because uh, for stitching audience, I think this is going to be uh, interesting. The thing is that um, I um, had the opportunity to go to uh, Williams Morris, uh, one of his uh, houses, the house in which he used to live when he was a child. Just a second, I'll tell you how that one is called because I'm always Williams Morris Gallery, it's called. So um, I had the opportunity to go there to film and uh, this was like the impulse to finally uh, buy something from uh, his uh, creation. Okay, not from his creation, let's say something which uh, remembers his, his uh, creation. And I um, wanted to show you what I filmed and what I have uh, bought. But uh, before that, let me start uh, to tell you a little bit about William Morris. Uh, for those who maybe don't know anything or at least uh, or very little about uh, him. So William Morris um, was born in the second half of the 19th century in 1834. The interesting thing is that I uh, first uh, got to know about William Morris in 2003. So this was more than 20 years ago. But I started stitching in 2013, so it was 10 years before I started stitching. And um, I um, uh, had, so I had to, had to, I studied William Morris at university at uh, English literature. And the thing is that I studied him as a poet, as a writer, and not as, a, um, how do I say, uh, not the, the influence he had in uh, uh, his teaching. Yes, I knew that he had the Williams, uh, the Morris and the Co. company that he used to paint as well, but that's it. I didn't know that uh, this uh, thing would um, be so uh, had such such a great impact in um, in uh, art craft, how do I say in handcraft as uh, as well. So um, he was born in the second half of the nineteenth uh, century in a wealthy family in um, London, um, Walthamstow, for those who know the uh, London uh, parts. The thing is uh, that um, uh, he spent his uh, childhood, like, in a, he was born in, I don't, I don't know which house he was born in, but the uh, house I visited, the uh, Williams Morris Gallery, it's, it is said that uh, he lived there when he was a teenager. Uh, then he went to study to Oxford because he was from a wealthy family. He was sent there to study, to become a clerk, clerk, clerk. but uh, there he met um, a young man uh, who became his friend. Uh, this is, uh, just a second, I'll tell you, Edward Bourne Jones, uh, and they became very, very good friends. And when they, uh, like, finished studying at Oxford and they went to London, uh, um, um, Warren Jones um, um, studied, started painting uh, and uh, met uh, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, a very bohemian uh, poet and painter, and uh, the founder of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, or society, how they were called. And you know, like, um, the Pre-Raphaelites, they, um, how do they say, um, main um, ideas were the fact that uh, the second half of the 19th century, when was the great industrialization, that one wasn't good for for England because they thought that that one destroyed with its numerous uh, um, factories and uh, uh, long uh, hours of uh, working, uh, all these things were destroying the good old England and uh, their idea, it was that uh, in the um, uh, Middle Ages, it was the best before the Rafa, Raphaelites, pre-Raphaelites, it was the best uh, time to live and to create. That's why all the, the things they um, wrote, uh, all the uh, things they painted had the roots in that period of time. So the nostal nostalgia of those times. And as I said, uh, William Morris was... Um, writer 
first, first thing. And it was uh, Dante Gabriel Rossetti who said, okay, yes, you're writing, but you know that it's very important to paint as well. For a pre-Raphaelite, it's important to be able to paint well. And you know what? He started painting and it, it proved that he was a very good painter. He was a, a little bit of a genius, I would say. Uh, so, yeah, uh, also um, at the time of Oxford, he met his um, future wife, Jane Burden. She was from a um, simple family, not so wealthy, and that created uh, um, disagreement of his parents. So his parents didn't want him to get to marry her, but nevertheless, he loved her very much and he married her. And uh, already being, um, how do you say, a young man with, uh, um, like, a, um, university finished he wanted a house of his own and that's why he commissioned the house um, and uh, he, the red house this one was uh, built in uh, Bexley Heath by the way and this is called the uh, Morris's family home one of his Morris's uh, family homes which he decorated himself uh, which why red house because it wasn't built of stone but from red bricks and uh, there he went with his uh, young wife, uh, where his two first daughters were born. This is the house he decorated already with his uh, creations. So this is a house to be visited, by the way. I already looked on the internet and apparently this one during uh, winter is not working. So it's going to be open in sometime in March. So um, if I'll have the opportunity, I'll go there as well. By the way, the um, uh, William Morris Gallery, it's a house with um, um, a park uh, behind the house, which is free to visit, so you don't have to pay any fee. Uh, but uh, this one, the Bexley Heath, this one already is paid, and it's the house and the garden which comes uh, like around the house, and that's it. So if I'll have the opportunity, I'll go. And one more place to see uh, William uh, Morris's creations, uh, as far as I understood, this is Victoria and Albert Museum, which I also want to visit and to see what they have there. So um, uh, about his uh, painting, he um, when he started painted painting, he wasn't the painter who would uh, make um, how they say uh, landscapes and things like this. He was uh, very into this kind of designs, you see. And these designs were meant to be, were intended uh, for um, interior design. He was very connected to the interior, very um, attracted to, to the interior designs. This is the Strawberry Fifth, by the way. I think one of the most uh, famous <laughs> pattern of his. Uh, and um, so these patterns he created, they were used in uh, wallpapers, they were used in uh, like uh, a chair, how it's called, upholstery, yes. Um, tiles, he also made tiles. Um, what else? He, um, the, um, how are called the colorful uh, windows? Doesn't come to my, we, we try, it's in French. Doesn't come to me in English. Oh, so he, he used to, to be very, very widespread uh, in uh, this uh, like in this area. He even created his company, which was called Morris & Co. Uh, he was uh, known for the fact that he um, tried to use only natural um, ingredients for, for everything he created. So he tried to be as natural as possible. Um, also, uh, he... Um, Oh, he, this uh, the patterns he created, of course, he wanted uh, to introduce in uh, embroidery as well. That's why it is said that when he wanted to get to this uh, part, he asked the help of his uh, wife and one of his aunts, if I'm not wrong. So that because of uh, a women's, uh, how they say, um, mind and opinion was, uh, was asked. Uh, and... Um, he uh, also uh, launched himself in the embroidery as well. Not so much in cross stitch as far as I understood, because cross stitch wasn't uh, very, very developed, but embroidery, mostly embroidery. Um, so this would be like uh, the short story I wanted to, to tell you about uh, him. Uh, it's not everything about his creation, not at all, but uh, just a short introduction so that you would know who he was and why he is uh, important for us, the cross-stitchers. 
Um, I uh, have wanted to buy um, something from or buy Williams Morris for a long time, but after visiting uh, the um, uh, gallery, you know, it was like the time when I said, "Okay, now I will I will buy something." Um, I will show you what I have bought after you'll watch the filming in the gallery. I try to do my best. Uh, I mean, like uh, filming uh, inside so that you would virtually be there as well. I uh, saw the famous uh, strawberry thief part of uh, the, the, um, the, the, how do I say, the fabric. Yes, it was a fabric there with the strawberry thief. Uh, the thing is that it was not a sunny day and in uh, this kind of galleries and museums they are covering the windows so that the um, sunlight wouldn't come inside and destroy the uh, exponents and that's why uh, the uh, light inside of course it was dark and they included the artificial light and the lamps didn't do their best you know that filming with the lamps it's not the best thing but as I said, I did my best. That's why I hope that you will enjoy what I filmed uh, inside the uh, Williams Morris Gallery.
And by the way, the last uh, images you saw in the uh, filming, uh, these were from, uh, I mean, the Williams Morris, which was painted uh, on uh, the wall, on the house wall. That one is from the parking lot, the uh, gallery's parking lot, which I also find it uh, nice. Okay, so what I have been buying uh, connected to Williams Morris. I said that I have always wanted to buy something, but finally, after this visit, I... Uh, I have some purchases. Um, so you probably saw it like in the previous one that I had such a thing from the gallery itself. They had a museum, they had a shop. Um, unfortunately, in that shop, I couldn't find anything. It was, yes, it was a very big, unfortunately, uh, because I asked them if they had uh, cross stitch kits. They didn't have, I wanted a um, diary. They didn't have just uh, the kind of uh, notebook, you know, where you write only notes. That's why the only thing I picked from there is such a decoration of bob, uh, ball, bubble, 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 how this one is called. Um, with uh, the um, strawberry thief. Yeah, I decided that I will be the follower of the strawberry thief. Uh, the colors are very beautiful, very like bright. And this one is going to serve as a decoration. It can be kept, kept even during the summer. Uh, it can be kept during the winter. I have uh, from Windsor Castle, I remember that I have a uh, uh, Christmas tree decoration uh, um, teddy. And uh, I like that one. And I remember always, like before Christmas, when decorating the tree, I remember that that one was purchased from Windsor. So um, I, I, I like buying things which will remind me later uh, uh, where I purchased them uh, from. Yeah. So such a decoration. This is the only thing I purchased. As I said, I asked the lady, uh, do you have uh, cross stitch kits or embroidery kits, uh, tapestry kits? She said, oh, you know, we don't have anything uh, we used to have, but nobody was buying. So we sent them back because uh, they were just lying. And I said, okay. And uh, I know that body threads uses to have uh, many kits uh, with uh, Williams Morris's um, designs. But the thing that... Um, I don't know if all of them, but I know for sure that the vast majority of them, they are um, needle point. And I didn't want needle point. I definitely didn't want needle point. That's why I haven't bought one from Bobby Thread so far. And when I came home from the gallery, I started like looking for like this um, strawberry fifth because I know for sure, I knew for sure that I want to stitch the strawberry fifth. This is the thing I wanted to stitch, first thing from William Morris. And I found the fact that DMC apparently has a collection from a Victoria and Albert Museum with uh, some um, uh, designs, not only by William Morris. As I could see here, they have from uh, uh, Vowsley, from uh, uh, Voicey, sorry, Voicey, from Deerl. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And I was like, okay, um, I tried to look for it. Apparently, and I don't know why, these kits are pretty expensive. Why do I say I don't know why? Maybe because of the name, because I don't know. Because here actually is uh, Aida, the 14th count uh, navy blue Aida. There, is, there are DMC threads, not so many, of course, because you don't need so many for this uh, design. And the hoop, because they suggest to finish it in a, in a hoop, you see? And that's it. But I like the colors and I like the idea of uh, framing it in a, in a round uh, frame, even in a hoop. That's why I purchased it, and I am yeah, I'm even thinking about stitching it maybe this spring. Um, and the first thing when I purchased it, I said, okay, I'm going to use everything what's inside, and I'm going to finish it, frame it, and that's it, I'm going to have it. But then when this one came, I was looking like, okay, um, I have this, um, I have even weave, this navy blue I have in even weave. And I said, okay, maybe I will, it's 14th count Aida, blah, blah, blah. And I said, do I really want to finish in a, it in a hoop or I would look for a frame because I need a um, seven inch frame. So when I start stitching it, probably I'll have, I'll make the decision. But uh, I know for sure that I want to stitch this one because it's colorful, it's nice. And I was thinking about uh, buying a planner uh, diary. Uh, even in the last uh, days of uh, 2023, because um, I needed for, I mean, like this diary would be for cross teaching mostly. There are things which I have to write because in the end I'm forgetting when I started this project, when I finished that project, so I have to do notes. 
I was looking for one um, and I couldn't decide what to buy. And after like visiting the gallery and saw that they didn't have there any diaries, I decided to look online. And guess what? I found one and it's 2024 and it's Strawberry Fifth. Yes. And I like it very much because it's exactly as I wanted uh, it to be. Uh, why? Just a sec, I'll show you why. Because you know those... Um, I don't know if they're called diaries. Uh, for cross teachers, which one to three uh, stitch uses to sell, they used to sell it like in the end of the year, so that you would buy it for the next year. So I was looking for one last year. I was looking uh, last. I mean, like uh, for twenty three. I was looking for one for twenty four. But still, I don't like the fact that they are large, and these things are this like um, squares into which you are writing. They are also very large, and they don't have any other things to put down. I think so at least, but. I found something similar, but it's much smaller the format. For example, look, this is January, you see? So here I can write whatever I'm writing. I'm, uh, I'm stitching uh, every day. This is top five notes. And this is uh, this are the previous month and the next month, you see? And when the month finishes here for each week, there are notes for each day. You see, you can write, still you can write a lot of things each day until you get to the next month. And in the end, in the end, you can make general notes. And in the end of, in the beginning of every month, you have like, you can put down also some things here connected with work and school, fun and adventure, home, me time, be social, health and fitness, so on and so forth. And there is the next uh, month, February. You see, and you have January, March, you have the previous months and you have again this thing. I liked it. Because, uh, as I said, I can put down a lot of things in such in such a way. Uh, it has a pocket here, a 3D pocket here. What else? It has, like, squares here, what you can write. It has dots. And it has some notes you can write. And then it's the same type of... Uh, um, it has two, like this. It's navy and white. And, and it has a space for um, a pen. So uh, when I was at the gallery, I was, wasn't looking for a pen because I didn't have a diary. Now I have a diary and I'm looking for a pen. Looked online, not so many, and I would like a pen also with strawberry fifth, uh, you know, like pattern. Um, they are pretty expensive. They are in a packet of three, and at least one is in strawberry fifth. And they're pretty expensive. That's why I thought that uh, probably I'm going to go, I hope I'm going to go soon to the Victoria and Albert Museum. And they have a stationery gift shop. They have a gift shop. Maybe there in the stationery department I'll find something which I don't think is going to be cheaper, but at least I'll be able to choose by myself, not by looking on the screen. I'll see. If not, I'm going to use just a simple pen and that's it. <laughs> the pen is not the issue. And as you could see in the beginning of the video, finally I purchased The Art of William Morris in Cross Stitch, the book. Yes, I know about this book. Um, there are a lot of stitchers who already have it. Uh, it wasn't a must for me, but I wanted to have it in my uh, library. Uh, it's a nice one. There are like the stitched design. What I like that the stitched designs are here as well. So you, I already showed you the red house, the patterns start here, and already I like that there is uh, the um, the story. Or they tell these are cushions. The thing is, they're beautiful. So, why I still prefer to prefer to stitch this one instead of this one, because um, these ones are big. If you want to stitch them for framing and not for cushions, you have to stitch it on a small account. This uh, here they are given for. 14th count AIDA, so you have to choose 36 for even 40th, so that they would be like smaller. So here come the, each of them. The threads, by the way, they are Anchor, DMC, and Madeira. Three brands of threads they are giving. This is bad linen. What I like that they are giving here, the way you are finishing them, like into different things. What else? Um, I like this one, by the way, somewhere in the hall, in the entrance of the house, it would be beautiful, peace in, the, in peace in this house. Uh, this one is nice, but um, I would be honest that I don't like the materials they chose, because if you look at the, um, just a sec, you see, 
if you would choose a different uh, threads, if it would be stitched on pure black um, uh, linen or even weave, and you would choose not um, uh, not metallic threads, because I don't think they are making this uh, design beautiful. You, you can choose simple ones, even uh, silk if you have. If not, it can be used cotton ones, and it would be it would look more beautiful. And there are like uh, it, there is a pendant, and there are three brooches here. Where they are? Yeah, yeah. Look, also nice, also beautiful. Then there is a tray. Beautiful. I like very much how they displayed. Yes, it's old. By the way, the book is from 1996. The yes, coasters. What else? The, this frame. It's very beautiful on a dark uh, fabric with gold. It's very beautiful. Not necessarily for pictures, for photos. I wouldn't uh, use it for photos, but if you need it for any other design, it uh, it would look. When you need a frame, this one would look beautiful. I think here is the. Okay. Bookmarks. Um, alphabet. Kelmscott alphabet. Uh, stool, footstool, beautiful one, by the way. I remember seeing it on uh, the charity shop, two of these footstools, but they were in very bad condition. I liked them, by the way, but they were in very bad condition. Okay, uh, these are frame craft boxes. Uh, this is tablecloth and napkins, so these are the napkins, these three are the napkins, and this is a tablecloth. This is, so the kind of tablecloth where you have just the center, you see, and even they show where they showed, you see here, which table it would uh, look nice on. Or you can uh, make a cushion, you see, with this pattern. And they give, for example, you can stitch this one, you can have a satchel, you can have a, a card, whatever you choose. This one, tea time, nice. I don't really remember how this one is called when you keep your um, uh, water warm for, for the tea. But the um, porcelain here is exquisite, very beautiful. Uh, what else? Spectacle case, flower garden collection, checkbook cover and credit card wallet. This two, beautiful this one, by the way. These four are nice tapestry pictures. Uh, they are nice if you would stitch the four of them like this and you would finish them like this and they look very, very nice like inside, very interior oriented, I would say. Okay, this are the... And the next one, the orange tree bell pull, by the way, this one is the one which I would stitch from here. I don't know why I like it so much. But I would finish it exactly like this with this beautiful, like, uh, metal bell pole. Beautiful one. And it's long. It's 76 centimeters. Where is the... It's... Uh, it's uh, um, six and a half by 30 inches. You see? Yeah. Table set designs. I don't think nobody is using nowadays this this way. I don't know. At least I didn't see live somebody using this kind of combs and hair brushes. This one, the Brer Rabbit picture. This would be the second I would stitch if uh, I would get over this creepy uh, rabbits' hairs. They are creepy. Really, I cannot get all of them. <laughs> I like everything, the colors, the navy Aida, uh, everything, but not the rabbits. The chart, basic techniques, the materials, yeah, that's it. Nice one, really nice one. Uh, I knew about this book, but uh, I didn't know the details. I didn't think that it's so nice, so I would... I would read it because I started reading in the beginning about William Morris, so I would continue reading it uh, little by little, finding out more about the this uh, man, his creation, and I don't know, it's interesting, it's nice. And uh, that's it. 
uh, that's everything about William Morris and everything I could tell you in this video. I hope it was interesting for you. I hope you found new things, new interesting things. Um, if you didn't know anything about him, if you knew something, I hope you find out something more, found out something more. And um, see you in my next videos. Until then, bye-bye.